Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Oliver Ames High School here in Easton, Massachusetts for game six of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. This one is the girls' championship game featuring the visiting Walpole Rebels and your home team, the Needham Rockets, in a game with huge implications for the Brockton area. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, we didn't know much about either of these two teams coming into this tournament, but both of them can run and gun and sling them from beyond the arc. Yeah, and that's why they're here in the championship game of this turn holiday tournament. Both teams, like just like that, can shoot it from the outside. They can work it on the inside and hit shots. They're both a good rebounding team. It should be a great game this evening. Well, Walpole... He is here by virtue of defeating the Brockton Boxers 62 to 31, the final score in that one, doubling up the Boxers. And a three off the bat for number 13. That is Julia Evans, the junior forward. Needham is here by virtue of beating the Olive Rames Tigers 47 to 42, the final score in that one. The Rebels of Walpole are wearing their visiting navy, this is one of my favorite color schemes, navy blue jerseys, orange and white trim. The Rockets in their home whites with navy blue numbers and gold trim. Ooh, nice move, she just couldn't finish the shot. It's all tied up three to three. We just saw Oliver Ames claim third place in this tournament, defeating the Brockton Boxers 61 to 47. Walpole tried to give and go. Rockets were right on it. I gotta say, I'm usually not too enthusiastic about holiday tournaments. One of the highlights, this is one of my favorite parts of this tournament. We've had six games so far. This is number six. Six different national anthems. Wow. The one before this game my favorite anthem singer of all time, Renee Rancourt. Of course, sings the anthem before every Bruins game at the TD Garden. Another three. This one, Bridget Lanchester, is no good. But well, well you know, the all-time favorite uh, anthem soloist is, you know who, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston. We usually try to play that during uh, Black History Month at Brocken High. For three is good. That is Kiara McIntyre, the sophomore point guard. She had a phenomenal game against Oliver Ames last night. Yeah, McIntyre, a lot of poise for a sophomore. Ooh, nice job there by number 21, Jill White. Nice shot underneath the basket. Looks like this Walpole team is playing a man-to-man -man defense against uh, the Needham Rockets. A rebound for Mariana Jansen, who had a strong game against the Tigers last night. And now the big man in the paint for the Rockets Caroline Clem, only a freshman, but you can see number 12 right there, one of the tallest members of the Rockets. Rockets right at the moment, little momentum on this side with a three point lead.
turnover. Walpole has it on the floor. A push called. I think I would have called a travel. Yeah. Or a, or a jump ball. Yeah. Leaning towards travel, but there's a reason I'm not wearing a striped shirt. A good reason. <laughs> Mostly because the solid jacket that I'm wearing is much warmer than a striped shirt. The official weather report brought to you by the Mad Dog Research Team. Getting colder, Ooh. even still. Ooh. It is a balmy three degrees outside. And that's just actual temperature. The wind chill has it sitting at about negative 15. So stay warm, watch some basketball. Outside it feels like, and this is what matters. This, everyone says the difference between temperature and wind chill. Not true. What it feels like outside is what it actually is. And that is negative seven in northeastern Massachusetts. Negative nine degree dew point. It was 40 degrees last week. God, I love New England. <laughs> and to think, one of our camera people tonight could have spent this holiday vacation in Florida or Portugal. And she is here holding it down with us. Trying not to look at us. She's laughing up there. <laughs> Cameraman of the uh, month. Cameraman of the month. Four games yesterday. Couple tonight, couple tomorrow. That's dedication for you. She's the real MVP. Yes, she is. This is... Sydney Scales. It's 10-5 Rockets over the Rebels. Clem coming down with the rebound and is fouled. I can't believe they called they a call foul. Offensive. I can't believe they called a foul on number clear 12. Possession. Yes, she did. Caroline Clem. Just got ripped off. Wow. Maeve Barker comes out of the game. Well, it should be a short rest for the junior guard. Clem in alone after coming up with the steal and she lays it off the glass and in. Great anticipation by Clem. Freshman. Good basketball instincts. A three-pointer no good off the front of the rim. This one's tipped out. Oh, nice, nice call. That was a good block out. Couldn't see who it was for the Rockets, but nice position to keep the Walpole player from actually grabbing the basketball, but it was just enough position where it was off the hands of the Walpole player trying to go after it. Julia Evans was in there with Clem. Layup no good, there's a scrum for it, and a jump ball called. Let's go back to that steal by Caroline Clem. As a freshman, you talk about calm, cool, collected composure. In alone, no mistake on the layup. This is number 12, Elizabeth Roach for the Rebels. And off to Lanchester. Lanchester, the captain of the Walpole team. First shot off the back of the rim, no good. Brought down by Jansen. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. It's 12-5, Needham over Walpole. A three-pointer to extend the lead, no good from Jansen. Walpole coming down with the rebound. Football pass 
And it's good for Jill White. Yeah, beautiful pass. She was looking up court and found her man streaking. Couple bounces off the rim and good for number 22 of Needham. That is Jenna Petronio. Three no good brought down by the Rebels. Now a three from the top of the key. This one off the back of the rim, no good. Another offensive board. Before finally being brought down by Kiara McIntyre. McIntyre coast to coast. Oh, it looked good. And foul. No, actually, uh, McIntyre came out of, from out of, bounds out of bounds and inbounds and got the basketball, and you can't do that. So it's 14 7. Need them on top. <laughs> if you are just joining us, this is game six of eight. We can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Tomorrow night, the final two games of the Olive Rams Holiday Tournament. The first one featuring the South Boston Knights, who fell to Cardinal Spellman. And the Olive Rams Tigers, who fell to the Brockton Boxers. That's the consolation game. The championship game features the Brockton Boxers and the Cardinal Spellman Cardinals in all Brockton championship game. The first time those two teams have played, we're calling it officially ever. The two teams from Brockton have never played basketball. They play soccer every year. Interesting. Never have they met on the hardwood for basketball. Well, that's about the change. You talk about 15 rounds. First of all, all Brockton, Rocky Marciano, 15 rounds, heavyweight division. A yeah. slugfest throwing haymakers at it for 32 minutes. Yeah, that should definitely fill up the seats, fill up the stands here in uh, all the rings. Couple games I'm excited for on the boys' schedule. January 16th, if you're not at Staff Gymnasium, you don't know what's up in high school basketball. The Brighton Bengals Division II should be Division I because they're that good. Brighton Bengals coached by Hugh Coleman and the Brockton Boxers. As the buzzer sounds, the first quarter has come to an end. It's 14 to nine, the Needham Rockets over the Walpole Rebels, so January 16th, We've got the Brighton Bengals, the Brockton Boxers. Should be a phenomenal game. Not many coaches louder than Hugh Coleman, and not many teams can get Coach Bob Bowen to take off his red sweater. Yeah, Bob, a lot of energy coming from that uh, Brighton team when they come to Brockton. They always um, give Brockton wonderful competition. Brings out the, the most out of our Coach Bowen and his team. And, of course, um, Brighton's coach, <clears throat> very animated, knows how to inspire his um, players to uh, go out there and give it their all. And then we've got Cambridge, Ringe, and Latin. Always a phenomenal matchup. That one January 23rd, a Tuesday night at Staff Gymnasium. A little bit disappointed. We don't see BC High at home this year or Catholic Memorial. This is, I think, the year that Brockton could hang with the Catholic schools. Well, I tell you, that, that, that's going to be a big game, the 23rd. Cambridge, as you know, have won two state titles back-to-back. -back. Very good team, and looks like they're off to a good start this year. So uh, that should be another um, blue chipper game. For the Brockton fans to enjoy. Clem back into the game for the Rockets. A short jumper. But made Barker is good. Also coming up, I believe it's January 7th. Staff Gymnasium, there's a celebration. USA Today has dubbed the state champion Brockton Boxers soccer team seventh in the nation. Wow. 
the whole country. That's saying something. There's thousands of high school soccer teams. Thousands. And there's seven. There's seventh in the whole country. Hats off to the um, Brockton High State champion soccer team for uh, 2017. A phenomenal playoff run. We've talked about it over and over, but it was just so spectacular. Almost going undefeated, finishing the season 19 and one. Yeah, and you had the or privilege. 17 and one. You had the privilege of calling that bat, um, of that season this year for Heads the. Heads up! Uh, Good stop, Miles. We were there each and every step of the way, as was Katya Andrade, our camera person up top tonight. An eight to one win against Marshfield in the opening round, six to one against King Philip, four to one against Silver Lake. And then the matchup, I thought that this showed the vulnerability of the Brockton Boxer soccer team. A one to nothing win against Needham in the South sectional final. Daniel Andrade scoring the lone goal in that one. A couple of hit posts. Needham dominated really the first half. And then Brockton came back and then they had the hit posts and a few lucky bounces as now we have a steal. Number 21, Jill White is in alone slowing up. Her layup is no good. Ooh, nice defense there. So one nothing victory against the Needham Rockets. These very same Needham Rockets. And then they were off to the state tournament. The neutral site is Needham calls a timeout. Here's the controversy of the, the postseason run. The neutral site of the state semifinal was Brockton High School. That was predetermined before they knew the two teams playing in that game. So it was Brockton, it was St. John's Prep. St. John's Prep finished undefeated. 15-0-2, uh, I believe, was their final record of the regular season. Brockton coming in at 17 uh, and, uh, no, 15, one and two. So very evenly matched. That game, two to one victory for the Brockton Boxers, decided by a penalty shot. Mm. The interesting note about that game, St. John's had three yellow cards in that game. A little known rule. I've talked to a few athletic directors not one of them knew this rule. If St. John's had four yellow cards, it would have been an automatic forfeit. Wow. <clears throat> and they were within one yellow card of that happening. Yeah, you couldn't get any, come any closer than that, the forfeiting your, uh, your playoff game. And that's the state tournament. What? And that was such a great game, it would have been a shame for it to end that way. But it almost did. Didn't. Brockton wins two to win off a penalty shot. I believe Odair Montero scored the game winning goal in that one. And then we were off to Worcester State University. You talk about a fun atmosphere. There must have been a thousand boxer fans in attendance. Seven fan buses sent from 02301 out to Worcester. That's awesome. Awesome fan support. The fans were Roshes the whole time, jumping up and down. I thought the press box was going to collapse. Backcourt violation against Needham as Walpole has taken their first lead of the game, 23 to 22. The score. Yeah, I, I tell you, Walpole's done an excellent job in the last three minutes or so, working the ball, working the ball inside, getting and hustling on defense to get quick shots on the inside and making the shots. Finish up the boxers' postseason run. We're out at Worcester State against the Long Meadow Lancers. Who? Who and where? The where Long are they Meadow from? Lancers. Long Meadow borders Connecticut and is south of Springfield. So that's how out west they are. Way the heck out in the middle of nowhere. 
in, we're trying to gather game film for Coach Furtado. He says, listen, I can't find anything online. Can you do anything for me? So I call Longmeadows Access Station. They say, hey, I work for Brockton. I'm trying to get some film. They say, we don't do high school sports. They don't film high school? They don't school? film any high school sports in Longmeadow. So I was like, okay, well, let me look at their schedule and see if any of their opponents, opponents yeah. did. And I was able to dig up a few. Gave it to Coach. And he says, oh, my God, these are on YouTube. This is unbelievable. Thank you so much. Let's get out to Longmeadow, uh, to Worcester to face Longmeadow. Longmeadow scores twice early in the first half. For the first time all year, the boxers are down two goals. Not sure how, how they would react to that. <laughs> Coach calls a timeout. Coach calls a timeout. Not much time remaining in the first half. Says something to get his team fired up. They finished the first half strong. Could not score. So also for the first time all year, Brockton is held scoreless in the first half. So we've now encountered two situations. Never heard or seen this year from the Brockton Boxers. Whatever that halftime speech was from Coach Herminio Furtado, you think of Herb Brooks in the 1980 Olympics, the miracle on ice. It was something like that. I heard it was a combination of three different languages that he was just laying into his team saying, listen, I know it's Longmeadow. You can't just come in and expect to win a state title game. Yeah, it sounds like he pulled a page out of uh, Newt Rotney. Um, Notre Dame. Back in the, um, I believe, 30s. So that speech got the kids fired up. They come out. Score five goals in the second half. Unheard of. Five goals in 40 minutes of soccer. And let me tell you, when they scored the first one, the place went nuts. And I was like, all right. So they're on the board. This place is nuts. It can't get louder than this. Now, we're in, a, we're in a closed press box. I was like, all right. It's very loud. We're wearing headsets, partly for air protection. <laughs> Couldn't hear a thing. So I, I've watched the game a few times since then, and I realize that I am absolutely screaming at the top of my lungs. Like, I completely lost my mind. And I'm up there with the uh, good friend Roberto Neves calling the game. And for the second half, the girls' head coach, Denise Glennon, joined us. And we're, so they score the first goal. We all lose it. We're all screaming at the same time. Can't understand a word we're saying. They score the second one. Place goes nuts. And we're like, all right, well, now it's tied 2-2. Two to two. If they take a... And it got even louder as the goals kept pouring in. So, like, all right, it can't get much louder than this. It's not scientifically possible, right? Brockton scores again about a minute later to take the lead. Their first lead of the state title game. Let me tell you, this place, if it was in a dome, they would need a new roof because they blew the roof off this place. Well, it just goes to show you how Brockton's crowd was the um, sixth man on, out on that field for the um, Brockton High varsity team. Provided their team with a lot of energy and spirit to carry them through in that second half. And they came out with... Um, there were drums, Great colors. there were cymbals, there was tambourines, there was vuvuzela, there was every sort of noise instrument you could have had. Unbelievable atmosphere. So it's three to two boxers. They score another one, four to two Brockton. And the place goes nuts because now the assumption is Brockton is just going to keep pouring them in. They're going to run away with this thing. Brockton scores again, it's 5-2, and then Longmeadow scores 5-3. Brockton keeps pressuring, there's a couple more hit posts. 5-3 final score, Boxers state champions, the first time in school history. 
that the boxers have won a state soccer championship. That's just an unbelievable story. I'm just glad you was able to witness it. Unbelievable. So we, we went back, we did a half hour special show on the boxers postseason run. And they had me edit it. And they were like, all right, you were at every game, you're the sports guy, you're editing this. And I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there watching this championship game against Longmeadow. I'm like, I remember a lot of the games that I that I announce. I honestly did not remember losing my mind in the way I did. They turned you this team turned people into fans in a way that I just have not seen. Whole city got behind them, but Pep Rally at City Hall, they had a team breakfast donated by Restaurant Luanda the day of the championship game. Shuttled seven coach buses of fans from the city out there. I'll tell you, winning will do that to you. It'll give you good fan support throughout the year, and especially when you get to the playoffs. And uh, Brockton showed their class in support of their um, high school soccer team. Plum lost this one and now it's Mariana Jansen. There is about 30 seconds left in the first half. It's 28-24, Walpole over the Boxers. And a foul committed with 29.7. Yeah, that was a body foul. I believe on number 23-32. That was uh, Jess Fitzgerald, who's a senior and one of the captains. Mike the Postman Simmons was there with us throughout the entire postseason run of the Brockton Boxers. Not a soccer fan. When given the option to not go to the state title game, he said, absolutely not. You better believe that I'm going to that game. <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable the way the team played as Putback attempt is converted. Number 32, Jets for Jess Fitzgerald. Two seconds left. A three is no good. The attempt by Sammy Kaplan. The buzzer sounds. The first half has come to an end. We've seen a dramatic swing in favor of Walpole. It is 30 to 24 miles. Good second quarter for the Rebels. Yeah, the Re <coughs> excuse me. The Rebels did a nice job working underneath the basket on the offense as well as defense, but especially the offense. This was some awesome passing there in that second quarter for the Rebels to get back in his game and take the lead uh, here at the uh, first half. It is 30 to 24, the Walpole Rebels leading the Needham Rockets at halftime of the girls championship game in the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism, it inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly, everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, you feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize, unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just listen. Show me love, show me love, show 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into All of Rams High School for second half action between the Walpole Rebels and the Needham Rockets in the girls' championship game of the 2017 All of Rams Holiday Tournament. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. And Miles Walpole had a big second quarter. They were down. I think seven at the end of the first. They've stormed back to take a six point lead coming into the second half. It is 30 to 24, the Rebels on top. Yeah, the Rebels have done a much better job working the ball inside to their big um, big players to make um, easier shots, but they've also taken some big shots from the outside. This is a all around team that uh, Needham is playing where they're both dangerous on the inside as well as the outside. Pump fake, nice inside, move off the glass, no good, too much mustard on it. McIntyre grabbing the loose ball. Over to Clem, Clem stopping and popping along two, no good. Walpole grabbing the rebound, but a jump ball, good work by Clem, who followed her shot. That's what I like to see. Now look what happened. She got a chance to get her hands on it. Newbie credits to Caroline Clem. Who is there again and forcing another jump ball. As Walpole almost came up with a steal. Walpole has possession. Yeah, Walpole's real tough on the uh, defensive end on the inbound pass. Needham's really had a tough time all evening trying to end ball. Inbound that ball. Walpole with another uh, basket. Starting to open it up a little bit here in the third quarter. This is McIntyre over to Maeve Barker. Now to Clem. Clem working away inside. Out to Barker for three. Is off the front of the rim. Barker following Follow her, her shot. shots. <laughs> Gets her own rebound. To Jansen, to McIntyre for three, no good. And what do you know, McIntyre didn't follow her shot. The Walpole ball, got the rebound. Ball came right back towards her way. I always find that that's one of my biggest pet peeves in high school basketball is when players do not follow their shot. They hawk it up from 15, 20 feet out. And look at it. And just look at it. They, they think it's pretty and it's, it's going to go be in. in a highlight reel with them showing off and saying, hey, look at this. I made a three-pointer. 20% of them go in. The other 80%, nothing. That one does is Clem marveled at her shot. Especially with those teams that like shooting the three, like the Brockton Boxers last year or the year before. And that's a reason that every team out-rebounds their opponents, is that there's nobody in the paint. Mm. Needham only down by five points, somehow is Made this game a little bit more interesting here with 5.35 on the clock here in the third quarter. Jansen flying in her layup, no good. Walpole with the rebound, 32-27. A five-point edge for the Rebels. And she was knocked off her feet going in for the layup.
you are just joining us, this is game six of eight here at Olive Rams for this holiday tournament. The girls championship game between Needham and Walpole. Oh, what a beautiful wow. three from, I believe that was Jansen hitting it for the Rockets. Another jump ball forced. Walpole will retain possession. Talk about a heavyweight battle. Yeah. At the same time this game is happening, Houston Rockets, a team that I always think is pretty good, and they're one of the teams that should be good every year, mm. finally living up to the expectations. Houston Rockets, Boston Celtics, at the current moment, Houston is up 14 to three. Wow. Make it six as Marcus Smart finally hit a three-pointer. <laughs> Talk about people that should not be shooting from beyond the arc. Marcus Smart is like now one for 57 attempts on the year. Excellent defensively. Offensively leaves a little to be desired. It's like Jackie Bradley Jr. a few years ago for the Red Sox. Best defensive center fielder in the game, no questions asked. Didn't know how to swing a bat. Thankfully, he has improved. He learned. Yes. They sent him down to Pawtucket. By the way, may the Pawtucket Red Sox rest in peace because it doesn't look like their stadium in Pawtucket is going to happen. They're in most likelihood going to move to Worcester. Which is a shame because as a kid, that's what my family did. We went down to see the Pawtucket Red Sox. Yeah, good family outing. $4, $5 tickets, a dollar hot dogs. Big baseball family, so... Damn shame they're moving to Worcester. That's well, a longer, isn't that a longer ride out there from then Pawtucket? It's a Pawtucket. longer ride out, yep. Pawtucket. Worcester, I'd, I'd say, is maybe about an hour, hour and a half from Boston, depending on where in Worcester they go. Pawtucket is about an hour. That was the that was the thing to do when I was a kid. Go to the Pawtucket Red Sox, especially when a member of the Red Sox is on an injury stint, right, in a rehab assignment. I mean, down there I saw Nomar Garcia Para, I saw Pedro a few times, I saw David Ortiz for a few bucks. For a few bucks, do the bobbing for autographs. Over the dugout. Need him back to an eight point edge, 38 to 30, as Barker and Clem have come out of the game. So scales. Her shot blocked away by Julia Evans, and now. Counted in one for Kiera McIntyre. Yeah, nice job by Kiera to come down to court, protect that basketball, put the shot up and still get a body on a defender and get fouled. Make chance to make a three-point play here. By the young sophomore. Looks 
good, and it is. It's 38 to 33, five point edge for the Rebels. Tomorrow Rock. night, stay tuned to Brockton Community Access as the boys slate finishes up with the consolation game to determine third place between the Southie Knights and the Oliver Ames Tigers. And then the game we are very excited to bring you. The Cardinal Spellman Cardinals, the Brockton Boxers, their first ever matchup. On the parquet floor. On the parquet floor, 15 rounds, heavyweight division. Pay-per-view. It's going to sell more tickets than Mayweather McGregor. You heard it here first. <laughs> Needham Rock is starting to do a little bit better job on the um, defensive boards. Preventing Walpole from getting two or three attempts like they did in that first half. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. A five-point edge for the Rebels. Counted in one for number 24. That is Selena Giampa, one of the two seniors, three seniors, rather, on this Rebels roster. To bring the Rebel lead up to seven and attempt to make it eight. Clem back in the game in place of Julia Evans. McIntyre driving, underhanded shot. Oh, wow. that was nice. Nice little scoop shot underneath. Thought they would have called a travel. Just took three steps with it in her bread basket. I'll tell you what, these referees are, for the most part, letting these two teams battle for the championship, letting them play. A lot better than the Spellman Southie game last night. Yeah, not a lot of whistles this evening. Travel call there on the sophomore, McNair. McIntyre, excuse me. Under a minute to go now in the third quarter. Excellent spin around shot for number 21, Jill White. Boy, that was great passing. Walpole working around the horn. Then working it inside. Shot was made, just great use of the 30 second clock by this uh, Walpole team. Cashed in on a two, easy two pointer underneath. Jansen pump fake, works her way inside, wide open lane, kicks it out to Clem, no good. Now Scales on the other side, her shot no good. The rebound to Sammy Kaplan. Jansen three, no good. And a jump ball forced by Giampa. And Jenna Petronio was fighting for it for the Rockets. Inbound pass tipped out by Selena Giampa. Jansen to McIntyre. McIntyre looking for Clem. Finds Clem. Spin around. Yeah, that's going to be a travel, travel on Caroline Clem. Yeah, Clem. Good defense caused her to take one extra step. Nobody realized, but the clock ran for about five seconds after that travel was called. Wall 
Walpole recovering, and Clem comes up with a steal. Up to McIntyre as time expires. The three would have been good if it went off before the buzzer. Did not. The score is 42 to 35. Walpole up by seven, but Needham is clawing their way back in slowly but surely, Miles. Yeah, it's a Needham yeoman job trying to get back in this game, but just as they get close, um, Walpole seems to somehow pull something out from underneath and, and um, stretch it back out again. So uh, Needham's going to have to figure out what to do in this last eight minutes of this ball game, which will decide the uh, holiday champion. End of the third quarter, as is tradition, want to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from Oliver Ames High School Game 6 of 8 in the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. We've got two people on camera that have been with us the entire way here in Easton. Katya Andrade and the prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow. Aaron's birthday is on Saturday, but until then he is grinding it here with us in Easton. Yeah, now he's on the floor with the floor camera. Working around this uh, basketball court for the best shots for you folks out there watching this basketball game. You are, of course, listening to the sultry sounds. Ooh, what that, a that block was... by Jansen. Wow, it looked like there was a foul on the play, but referee didn't see anything. Jansen stops, pops, long two, no good. Yeah, the uh, Needham Rockets could have used that shot right there after great defensive play at the other end of the court. You are, of course, listening to the sultry sounds of the old school DJ himself. Big game, Miles Jackson, and myself, the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. Also gonna give a congratulations to Janet Trask. Barker for three, looks good, Ooh. nothing but net. Lollipop rainbow shot right there, that was pretty. Janet Trask volunteers everywhere, everywhere. Any city event, guaranteed you're gonna see Janet Trask there as Walpole's called for a travel. Janet Trask being honored by the New England Patriots. Wow. And their Celebrate Volunteerism Initiative before the New Year's Eve game against the New York Jets. Her first Patriots game she's ever going to, she's being honored by the organization. Wow. Congratulations to Janet Trask. At some point, we will have that for you on Brockton Community Access. The, not the game, but the ceremony. ceremony. If anybody would like to see game highlights on the Brockton channels, contact Stacy James. He's the media relations coordinator for the New England Patriots. The NFL will charge you $60 for one second of video. So if you want a two minute highlight clip of the game, you're on the hook for, oh geez, at least a couple of hundred bucks. Let's see, 60 seconds per minute, $60. 360 bucks per minute. Yeah, that's about right. A lot of dough. Well, the NFL has turned into a $12 billion a year business. Someone's going to pay Roger Goodell's <laughs> $44 million a year salary. But they'd be happy for you to pay $820 for two minutes of video. It's more than I'm making a week. But the pictures and video from the ceremony, the Patriots are kind enough to give it to us. They didn't want to give up two seats in the press box <coughs> for a couple of us to go. Well, that would have been exciting. We'll also be, we're invited to an open media availability. Next week during practice, bodies hit the floor, McIntyre and Barker. Or rather, Evans got tangled up. Needham called a timeout. But we're going to be interviewing. Very excited about this. Devin McCourty, Damon, Danny Amendola, a couple of the other Patriots that are heavily involved in volunteerism. 
at Gillette Stadium. Very excited for that. And we're going to package that all together into really an awesome segment. And we're going to package that with the Patriots' new playground over at McKinley Park in Ward 6 at Hovenden and Winter Street. Yeah, that's going to be a definitely proud moment for the um, Brockton community with Janet Trask and um, the new uh, Patriots playground that's, being, that's um, been put up. Danny Amendola uh, donated a couple of reading rooms to local elementary schools in Brockton. That's awesome. We had Joanne Druzy. Yeah, just some of the Ed. some of the many good things that are coming out of Brockton daily. Brockton gets a bad rap, but uh, Brockton's really um, community-minded um, city. I Work. did not see a foul right there. I didn't see the foul either. They're gonna call it. Is it on number 24 of Needham? Yeah, Needham has cut and this lead. Number 12, lead. that's Caroline Clem, her third personal. Yeah, they've cut this lead down to five points with 5.42 on the clock. That's a travel. The layup is good for number 21, Jill White. Yeah, Walpole's passing is just unbelievable in the half-court offense. Jansen pump fakes, works her way inside out to Clem. Clem for three is no good. Offensive rebound for Barker. She was definitely fouled. Yeah, there was body contact there, no whistle. Clem setting the pick to create some space for Jansen. Her short jumper, no good. Offensive board again, and this one ripped out of the hands of Evans. Walpole comes away with it. Sydney scales with the loose ball. Five minutes to go. Yep, Needham's got to come out of there with two points when they have that basketball for just about the whole 30 seconds of the um, shooting clock. They've got to come out of there with, with some points. Under five minutes to go. The five second violation. Yeah, Needham's have a, has had a tough time all evening trying to inbo inbound that basketball from underneath the basket. Walpole very tough on defense. Causing havoc. Scales a little give and go with Amanda Minsk. Minsk we talked about last night. One of the cooler last names. A town in Russia. And fun fact. The village back in the olden days of Russia where my great grandparents came from. Clem is at the line for two shots, the second personal foul against Natalia Amaral. Clem good on her two shots, 46 to 48, six point edge. Still one, uh, two possession game for Needham. Almost halfway through the fourth quarter. Loose ball off the glass and in is Needham's coach screaming for a foul is not going to win that argument. Amanda Shea, he's still yelling at the ref. The ref saying, no, 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 no. That's clean. We're letting them play. The key word to this is consistency. If you're not going to call it on one end, don't call it on the other. Needham's going to call a timeout. And Needham's coach has to be careful. She's still going after the ref. Yeah. I kind of don't blame him because they're really trying you, to hard to get back in his basketball game. When you get game. into the, the visual demonstration, she was like this. That's when you start to get into this could be a tech. Well, just as long as she doesn't mouth off to the referees, she can 
make all the visuals she wants. And that's wants. what we saw in that very, very weird sequence last night between Southie and Spellman, where there were a total of three technicals given with the clock not moving. A double tech given to Yaniel Balbuena, the top scorer of Southie, who was at the line to shoot a free throw off of a foul by Craig Faria, who was given a tech for mothing off to the official. A wild sequence. There were two regular fouls given and three technicals, and it only resulted in one shot wow. for Southie. It's a 10-point edge for the Rebels. It's Jansen able to break the full court press of the Rock of the Rebels, excuse me. Jansen's short jumper no good out of play off of Walpole. Three and a half to go, a 10-point edge. In for Barker out to Jansen, Jansen behind the back nicely. And this one on the ground as Walpole takes possession. Sydney scales all the way, looking shot now pass to Jill White. Need him back the other way, 3-10 to go. And off the glass and in is Kiara McIntyre. Yeah, that's almost automatic when she's just got one defender on and, and, and the same size. Kiara knows how to uh, take the ball to the basket and get results. This game is much more competitive than the one at the TD Garden. The end of the first quarter, Houston is beating the Celtics. This one's ugly, 32 to 12. Wow. Jump ball called, Walpole will retain possession. Walpole just too tough on the boards. They're a little bit bigger team than um, Needham Rockets. Long two, no good. Clem with the rebound. Barker three, no good. Needham needed that one. Loose ball to the Rockets. Barker for another three. This one no good. McIntyre can't grab the rebound. Walpole takes over on downs. 2.05 to go in the fourth. It's an eight-point edge for the Rebels. And a foul committed by Mariana Jansen, her third personal. Needham unable to. They've had the open shots here in the last couple of possessions. They just couldn't hit that three-pointer. They really needed that three Miles, time winding down. You've got one game ball to give to each team. Yeah, Needham needs off to with make the shots. Needham Rockets. Who are you giving the MVP of this game to? That's a good question. Uh, Walpole's a very uh, balanced attack. I, it might take me a few minutes. I'm hovering between two for the Rockets, and that would be Kiara McIntyre and Caroline Clem. You are absolutely correct in your assessment of the Walpole Rebels. There's five or six names that could get it. Yeah. Might have to go with Jill White. As Emily Lund comes off the floor. Yeah, Jill White's been solid all game. Who's a junior. Been tough under the boards. Good passing. I'm very impressed with Walpole's passing. They do a lot of passing without even, without even putting the ball on the court. Timeout called by head coach Amanda Sheehy of the Needham Rockets. 158 to go. 52 to 44. It is an eight-point edge. For the Walpole Rebels, 150 to go. Stay tuned. 
to Brockton Community Access tomorrow night here at Oliver Ames. It is first Southie versus Oliver Ames in the boys' consolation game, and then Cardinal Spellman versus Brockton High in an all Brockton final. As the boxers are undefeated now, six and zero on the year, getting a huge win. They just absolutely dominated Oliver Ames here last night. Crowd should be rocking for that one. Definitely so be a nice way to go out 2017 with a holiday tournament win under your belt. And still undefeated if they can uh, win. Scales breaking the press easily, but has it intercepted by Barker. Barker up to Jansen. Uh, a couple of bodies hit the floor. A couple of floor Loose burns. ball. Jansen able to get it. Now number 13, Julie Evans for two is good. 52-46 now, six point edge for the Rebels, 134 left to go. If you're Walpole, you gotta slow this up. You gotta exactly. waste as much exactly. time off the clock as you can. Exactly. And now they do that, Sydney Scales. Ten on the shot clock now. You think about shooting Scales, hands off. Five on the shot clock and now Bridget Lanchester for two, no good. Clem rips down the rebound. This one's not over yet. Maeve Barker coming back to grab the pass and she commits the travel. Uh. The layup would have been good if she was able to hold on to the ball. 101 to go in Walpole. That pretty much will do it, I think. Scales fouled by McIntyre. He was called for the block. Still a one and one shooting situation for the Rebels. Scales is at the line, good on her first attempt to earn the second. Huge point, 53 to 46 the score. Yeah, clutch free throw shooting here with less than a minute to go by Scales. One of two, Evans with the rebound, this one not over <coughs> yet. It's McIntyre off the glass and in. Wow. An immediate timeout with 51.6. It is now a five-point edge for the Rebels. Plenty of time left. Yeah, that was a tough shot by going to her left was uh, McIntyre, and she made the shot. Bring this uh, lead down to five points, like you said, with 51 seconds left in this uh, championship game. Well, that pretty much seals my MVP pick for the Needham Rockets. It's going to be Kiera McIntyre. Yeah, definitely so. Kiera has uh, made some clutch shots. Pretty consistent, steady ball player. When she goes to the basket, more likely she will make the make the shot. I'll tell you, she's fought hard to get those shots. The Walpole Rebels are very tough underneath on the defensive end. And just tenacious on the offensive end of the boards. And that's why they got a five-point lead. It is only five points. That's two possessions. Plenty of time left. Walpole with the inbounds. Caroline Clem defending. This one sent up ahead and complete. The layup. That angle is good. You know, a timeout from Walpole. Yeah, nice job by Natalia. Amaral moving without the basketball, then setting herself up right there on the left-hand side of the paint by the rim. Took the pass and put it right up in for an easy two to make it even harder for the Needham Rockets to uh, come back in this ball game with only 46 seconds left on the clock. So it is 55 to 48, now a seven-point lead for the Rebels. Is Walpole in good position to claim the title here at the 2017 Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament? Be a phenomenal slate tomorrow night here at OA. We'll have.
have it for you on Brockton Community Access. Saturday, feel free to come down and freeze your you-know-what's off with us at AZ Arena as the Milton Wildcats come to town to face your Brockton boxers in hockey. Brockton 0-1 oh on the year, falling to the Falmouth Clippers 5-4 in a comeback effort. A travel call, I, I think I would have called a foul before travel. Yeah, there was contact there before the travel. Kiera getting the short end of that call. Scales as McIntyre commits the foul. Good foul right there. If you're gonna if you're gonna foul the, the team and you only got you got about thirty seconds, thirty six seconds left on the clock, you foul right away, like Kiera just did. Spin around jumper is good off the rebound, and that will seal this one. 57 to 48 your score. Nine point lead. May have Barker for three is no good. In the right place at the right time was Evans, but it rolls off of her knee to Bridget Lanchester. Shot clock is off. Walpole is just going to hold on. As dancing away is Lanchester, and she is fouled by Jansen. 12.5 seconds left. This one is out of reach. Yes, it is. For the Needham Rockets. Well, Needham Rockets gave it a good try concerning the um, the weapons that they had. They were just a little bit overpowered by the a little bit more taller and um, better shooting Walpole Rebel team. The Lady Rebels. Jensen under 10 seconds left. Step back two, can't get a shot off. Now a floater for Clem is good. The buzzer sounds and this one has come to an end. The final score 58 to 50 as Walpole claims first place in the Oliver Rams Holiday Tournament. Needham coming in second. Miles, a very competitive game up until the very end when Walpole's offense just ran away with it and Needham could not keep up. Yeah, along with Walpole's offense was the tenacious defense made it very tough for Needham to uh, get this shot get this shot off, and it was something they scored 50 points with that tenacious um, Rebel defense. Miles, tomorrow night, Southie and Oliver Ames, and then Spellman and Brockton pump us for the boys' consolation and title games. Well, that consolation game will be a lot of pride in that. Southie coming there, you know, they have a lot of pride in their um, in their team. So I, I look for a very tough consolation game, but we'll be all waiting for that big-time uh, championship game against the two Brockton representatives, Cardinal Spellman High and Brockton High. Your final score from Oliver Ames in the girls' title game, 58-50. to 50, The Walpole Rebels taking the title over the Needham Rockets. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.